40 knots looks like in the wind. <laughs> See the sea spray. All of the smallest decisions in life lead up to the present moment. Every opportunity grasped and every opportunity elapsed has put you exactly where you are right now. It just so happens that we have ended up here, anchored 300 nautical miles out in the middle of the wild ocean, anchored in the lee of a small outer reef, bunkered in 50 knots of howling wind. This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore the planet both above and below the surface. And see what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. I saw on the weather report that we were going to get 27 knots per predict wind, and we actually have gotten 35 sustained, upwards of 42. We got 55 meters of chain out. Now we're in position um, that we swing the way we should because it's coming from the south side, and it's not going to get any worse. So I think we're going to try to get some sleep, but it's been madness. And now I'm just worried that tomorrow the swell is just going to build throughout the day. We'll see how rough that gets, but it says it's supposed to get up to three meters, but the reef should block a good portion of that. So, let's we'll see what happens. So it's early in the morning. They've got 40 knot winds with gusts of 48 knots. And the wind is just it's howling, it's so loud. The waves are breaking all around us. Um, we're surrounded by reef, so we had night watches through the night to make sure that we weren't dragging. I think it makes you feel very much alive and very small in a good way. Places like this, you have to take a lot of risks to get to. We're out in the middle of nowhere. There's no one around for miles and miles and miles, but the reward is so great. We get to see these remote places and you know, that no one else goes to. Yeah, so the risk pays off. Morning. Good morning, top of the morning to you. What would you like to, what would you like to know? You know, we're just having a good chit chat about who would die first in a survival situation? Who would win? Who would win? Who would win? Uh, Molly thinks she would win, um, but that's only because she could like eat dirt and be happy. Manu would have the, the nicest shelter. You would uh, disassemble the boat and reweld things that have 90 degree angles and it would feel nice. Uh, but yeah, I don't, want, I don't want to name any losers. I think that's a bit mean. Let's so. <laughs> not do that. Protected from the elements, Sylvia is our cocoon of safety and warmth. It's surprisingly cosy inside, with the wind trying to force itself into every crevice. Apple cider vinegar and honey off the cone Do a lot of good for a simple man so Take it hot, take it right off the stove Add a little liquor, it'll cure a little cold Got cigarettes and coffee in the rain outside, but it takes a little more to feel just right.
what is uh, what is the Mexican Independence Day about? Talk us well, about it. 1810, a Spanish gentleman by the name of Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla mm -hmm. called for the Mexican people to go basically become independent from the Spaniards. Miguel Hidalgo, who was a priest, rang a bell really loud to summon the whole town and let them know, hey, let's fight for our freedom. At midnight on the 15th to the 16th of September, um, we cherish all of our national <laughs> heroes. And we say, Viva Mexico! Viva Hidalgo! Viva Jose Fortis de Dominguez! A lot of food, a lot of music, fireworks, it's, it's incredible, full of color, and uh, Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico! Right here, right here! Viva Mexico, cabrones! It, it happened to be my cooking day. It was not planned at all, but it happened to be my cooking day. Yay! So, we're gonna have tacos for lunch. I'm gonna say it in Spanish, okay? So, some tacos de camote, Ejotes, un poco de <coughs> mushrooms, de champiñones. Right now, and then once the wind drops off tonight or this afternoon, that's when we'll go have a bit of fun. And Molly, what about you? Doing the same for yeah. the rest of the girls? I'm editing what's happening now, so editing things that happened yesterday. Oh my god, so exciting! <laughs> I don't have any extensive headphones, but I've made my own with my cheap earphones and, and the earmuffs. <laughs> Oh, just cleaning off the dinghy, removing all the barnacles and spraying off all the gunk that's built up while it's been in the water. Fixing the, the compressor. It's just been abused and used for probably about a thousand dies by now. And we use it way more, like 12, 15, 20 tanks a day, and it's probably designed for two. So we do a lot of wear and tear on it, and I'm just taking out a lot of the parts inside of it so that uh, it can keep working good, keeping little Frankenstein going, so. Hey, ST. Yes? Do you want some peanuts? <laughs> hey, Are you sure? It's very I'm tasty. <laughs> These last two, three days have been really windy. It's been um, uh, raining, so it hasn't been like that nice to be outside of the boat. So everyone has been like staring pretty much like 24/7 at uh, the galley and all the the commons inside areas. Uh, and to be honest, like it's been really nice. So we are just about to move the boat now to a different spot on Middleton Reef. We want to be able to like dive immediately off the boat and like have the reef right there. The boys have just gone on the dinghy to scope out our new potential spot and hopefully there's a little spot that we can fit into because we're so big it's really hard when it comes to like a shallow reef finding a spot that at low tide we're going to sit comfortably over some sand. I think they found a spot, so we're on our way there now. And it also looks like there might be some surf out here, so I think Molly and Paul will be really happy. We were in the channel, so we're going somewhere where the current won't be as strong. And we are looking for waves. Colors are brighter, my steps they are lighter, the skies never We actually still have like 17 to 20 knots of wind, but it's so funny that after days and days of 40 plus, that it just seems like kitty stuff now. <laughs> it seems like such like a nice day, but a normal, this is still blowing. This is still like very saleable. In fact, it's perfect sailing conditions. But for us, it's like, it's like a, it's a calm between like all of these pretty hectic nights, hectic days. And uh, you can really start to see like how beautiful this reef is and uh, we're really excited to explore it. To be 
Frank, it's kind of a rough sail. It was a rough, like, get the boat ready, followed by a rough sail, and then we get here, and then it was rough as. So a lot of the new crew hadn't really experienced, like, why we do this, because right now they're probably like, this is just madness, this is hard. Because sailing is hard, um, but it's been extra hard. I'm sailing in right back to you, such a sweet melody, the song in my heart plays, I hope it's... Wait, can you, like, sneak in behind that reef right there? What's your depth? Right here. All right, what about penetrating deeper into the lagoon? Everybody's got to get hurt. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> good, good. So push Baku over, boy. <laughs> and then save him. If you were a 23 meter steel vessel, would you like to spend two nights at your current location? Would you swipe right on your current location? <laughs> It seemed like Poseidon had decided that he had punished us enough, as the wind died down and the sunshine followed. It was time to explore under the water and on the water at this beautifully isolated reef. Seems like the beauty and birds fly around, I guess fate had it coming when you showed up on a house this way, nature intended girl, despite what I thought of me. We're out here in the middle of the ocean and we found the ultimate secret wave. I don't think anyone else in the whole world has surfed this wave. It's a really nice peeling right, right by the reef in the channel and it's just stunning. Stunning! Really beautiful. Sophie's over there. We're over here. Philip's happy. Life is good. Today I'm gonna to do my first scuba dive. Ooh! Yeah. yeah. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. I yeah. Can't, I can't wait. <laughs> All right, let's do the briefing. All right, we are going to take the boys on their first open water dive. Um, we found the perfect little spot inside of the reef. It's got sandy bottom, not very deep. It's ideal pool-like conditions. So Gloria is gonna do her advance today. So excited. Who's your instructor? Um, this crazy Spanish lady. Oh my god. <laughs> How lucky you are. I know. <laughs>
So I think that I've just had my favorite morning yet here with Sophia. Philip, Molly, Nate and I went out for a surf on the reef and it was my first time surfing a reef break and it was so cool. The water was so clear, like crystal clear. And it was just beautiful. We were surrounded by blue, so blue. And on our way there, we swam past a shipwreck and the, it was just crystal clear, so blue. Oh my God, wow. And I'm actually just so grateful that um, Philip and Molly are such good surf teachers. They've been coaching me since, feels like day one, and I feel like I'm improving. Um, I've had a lot of practice, and I'm getting lots of good advice from them. I'm learning so much, not only like sailing, but now surfing too. And it's exciting to see what this, what's gonna happen. Manu, what, so did, what did you just do? I went snorkeling for the first time. Yeah? We saw a shark. <laughs> like, probably like six or five. <laughs> <laughs> it was so close. I the reading, I was really like scared. Yeah. And then I saw the other guys, they were really calm. They went really close to the sharks. And you know, I felt like, oh, I can do that too. So I did it. And really cool. And then in the end, I saw stingrays too. Yeah? And all the big fish, I don't know what's the name. A grouper. Yeah. What an incredible day. The boys had their first scuba diving lesson. They were my first students ever, so that's so exciting. I don't know, I just feel like that excitement, like they were so stoked, like coming up, like we didn't really see anything on the dive, but they're still so excited. It just gives me this like new energy for like how cool what we're doing is. And surfing, and we found this wreck um, that I don't think it was even on the map, but it was right near the surf break and we were trying to anchor and then found the wreck and that was awesome. So we went for a dive on that and there was all these sharks and cool stuff and it's just the most amazing place. It's so cool. And the vibes are just high. Everyone's having the best time. I love it. I love it here. <laughs> Next time on Expedition Drenched, we jump in for a blackwater dive. I'm starting to feel a little bit agitated, all climbing on top of each other. I didn't even go outside this morning because it was so windy. So many people in such a cramped space. I'm really annoyed at like just small things when somebody walks too loudly. Somebody is in my way. I'm impatient. I like to have my space. I even, I have to go on the roof. Of course, like you wake up and you don't even have like a moment to be by yourself. Even more agitated or like starting to be, oh my God, like I got someone here, I got someone here. It's been raining, it's been really cold outside, really windy. I have been asked five times since last night why the toilet does not flush. I don't know, <laughs> I'm not a plumber. Why are you asking me? This is just madness, this is hard, extra hard.